How's it going guys and welcome to my fire caves guide where I will teach you about the fire caves to slay Jad and get yourself your own fire cave. In this fire caves guide I will be teaching you everything you need to know about the fire cave, how to get to the fire caves, lowest to highest tier gear and weapons, items to use for your inventory, recommended stats to have, the monsters inside the fire caves, the waves, the battle with Jad and some tips to help yourself during the fire caves. So let's talk about the fire cave. The fire cave is the second to best melee cape in the game after the infernal cape. Compared to other melee capes defensively to the legends, obsidian and skill cape, the fire cape has a plus 11 in all defensive bonuses and also gives a plus 4 in strength as well as plus 1 in all attack bonuses, while other capes do not give any offensive bonuses at all. So what happens when you die with your fire cape? There are three different results that can happen when you die with your fire cape. This result is dying in the wilderness below level 20 which results in your fire cape breaking, meaning the person who killed you will receive 37.5k and you will need 50k to fix it from an armor stand in PvP worlds or from the NPC Purdue, which can be found across death respawns in Feldor, Lumbridge and Camelot in World 18 and in Edgeville Bank in World 18 or is found upstairs in the Edgeville General Store in other worlds. The second result is dying in the wilderness above level 20. This will result in your fire cape becoming coins when you die to a player becoming 37.5k, but you will not get your fire cape back, meaning you'll need to go back to the fire caves to defeat Jad and retain your fire cape. And the final result is dying to an NPC or anything else that isn't PvP related. This will result in your fire cape still intact in your inventory. So is there anything else you can do with your fire cape? Well, there are three things you can do with it. The first thing you can do is trade in your fire cape to attain the Jad pet or you can sell for 8,000 topple. The second thing you can do with your fire cape is show it to the NPC Tazar Kekur to access the new Tazar City expansion. And finally, you can trade in your fire cape to attempt the inferno to get yourself an infernal cape. Note that once you give your fire cape to the NPC to attempt the inferno, you will not get your fire cape back, but you can attempt the inferno as many times as you like. So how do we get ourselves to the fire caves? There are many ways to get yourself into this area, but the best way to get there is to use the mini game teleport to the Tazar fight pit. You can also use the fairy ring code BLP, which can be used after partially completing fairy tale part 2. You can also use the amulet of glory teleport to Karamja and making your way into the volcano. So now let's talk about our gear setup. I'll be going through the lowest and highest possible gear you can wear when attempting your fire cape and also going through the defense levels of each account build. During this section of the video, you can pause it to see what you can wear when attempting your fire cape. The images you will see on this video will be the lowest and highest gear you can wear for these account builds. So let's start off with 1 to 13 defense. Their lowest budget gear are basically identical from each other as there isn't much you can do to change this gear. I'll give you some time to pause the video to see what you can wear to improve on the lowest gear you can see in the video. Now let's move on to the lowest gear you can wear for 20 defense. The only real difference with this gear is the body to give you more range attack but gives you a little less in prayer bonus. As for high level gear, it's basically the same as 1 to 13 account builds. Now we have the lowest for 30 defense. To change this is now you can wear snakeskin armor, but the main snakeskin you would wear is the snakeskin boots. As for the higher level gear, it's still exactly the same as levels 1 to 20 defense. Next we move on to 40 to 45 defense account. As you hit level 40 defense and have completed dragon slayer, you can now wear dragon hide bodies. Blessed dragon hide coif can be swapped in with the miter as the coif gives range attack bonuses and gives some prayer bonus as well. As for higher level gear, levels 40 to 45 defense can now wear the blessed dragon hide armor. At level 45 defense you can wear 3rd age range, but it doesn't give any more range attack bonus and will only give you higher defense bonuses. And finally, let's move on to 55 to 75 defense. If you have completed the Fremic Isles quest, you have the ability to wear the Helm of Nezes Knot. If you haven't completed this quest, you can still wear the Blessed Coifs instead. As for the higher level gear, you can get yourself the Armadale set and the Pegasus boot, which will give you the best in slot range gear in the game. So now we have the gear out of the way, let's move on to the weapons you will use to make it through the fight caves. There are 5 different weapons you can use and also use a combination of these weapons with another. Let's start off with the Runei Crossbow. This crossbow requires 6 or 1 range to wield and can be used with Diamond Bolts Enchanted during your fight caves. This bow will attack every 5 ticks when using the Rapid option. If you want a better crossbow than Runei, you can use the Armadale Crossbow which will require 70 range to use. Also, the Armadale Crossbow has a special attack which doubles the accuracy for that shot and consumes 40% of your special attack. Next we have the Crystal Bow Imbued. To use this bow, you'll need to complete the Roving's Elves quest, but you don't get it as an imbued item, so why imbue it? By imbuing the crystal bow through the Nightmare Zone minigame, the bow will keep its range bonus as it degrades. Once it is fully degraded, it will become a crystal seed and you will need to talk to Elfin to create a new crystal bow out of the one that just degraded and re-imbued that bow again. When using this bow on Rapid, it will attack every 4 ticks. Now we have the Carol's Crossbow. 
This bow requires 70 range to use and can only use bolt racks as ammunition. When this weapon is used on rapid, it will attack every 3 ticks. Next up is the Toxic Blowpipe which requires 75 range to wield. This blowpipe requires Zoro scales and darts from Bronze to Dragon to use it and has the ability to venom your target. By using the special attack of this weapon will increase your damage by 50% and heals you by half of the damage dealt and uses 50% of your special attack. When using this weapon it will attack every 2 ticks on rapid. And finally we have the best ranged weapon in the game which is the Twister Bow which requires 75 range to use and can use Bronze to Dragon Arrows. What makes this a strong bow to use is the effect it has when you attack a target with a higher magic level, meaning the higher the magic level the more damage you deal. When using this weapon it will attack every 5 ticks on rapid. So what are the combinations you can use with these weapons? Well out of all the weapons here, they can be used in combination with the Toxic Blowpipe. Since all the other weapons have a longer range than the Blowpipe, you can stand in safe spots inside the 5k as well using the longer range weapons. So is there any other gear that could be used during the fight caves? Instead of using the armors I've shown off, you have the choice of using the void range set that you can obtain from pest control which will cost 850 points to obtain, but you will need 42 attack, strength, defense, range, magic, hit points and 22 prayer in order to wear it. If you want to upgrade this armor, you can by speaking to the elite void knight after completing the hard western provenance diary and giving the void knight 200 points to upgrade the top and bottom of the void knight armor. You also have the choice of using the full carol set with the amulet of the dam while using the carol's crossbow. To wear this set you will need 70 defense and 70 range to wear. The ability the amulet has with this set it has a 25% chance of dealing 2 hit splats which the second hit will be half of the first hit splat. If you don't believe you have enough healing items in your inventory, you can bring along the Guffin set which has a 25% chance of healing you when you successfully damage your target. So is there anything else? Well, there are other items you can bring along to help you, which is the Ceridome and God Sword to heal your hit points and give you some prayer points, the Ancient Mace which can be used before the fight caves on a combat dummy inside a player owned house to boost your prayer points, the Explorer's Ring which can give you some prayer bonus instead of using a recoil ring, the Felidor Shield which can give you full prayer points back and the Ring of Suffering that can give you more defense bonuses when imbued and can hold recoil rings so you don't just have to bring the one. What potions or food do we bring with us into the fight caves? The main items you want to bring are the Ranging, Super Restore and Zero Diamond Potions. You can bring 2 or 3 Ranging Potions, 3 to 6 Brews and the rest in the Super Restores. When drinking the Zero Diamond Brews you can drink a total of 3 doses and then drink a Super Restore to fully restore your stats. If you don't believe you can make it with just that many brews, you can bring purple sweets which can heal a random amount of 1 to 3 and restore your run energy by 10%. You can also use prayer potions instead of super restores but remember to bring one super restored dose to every 3 Cerodomen brew dose when using prayer potions. If you want to try and rush through the caves, you can bring stamina potions as well which will restore 20% of your run energy and will reduce the rate of your run energy draining by 70% for 2 minutes. Another option for Cerodorian Brews are the Pineapple Pizza which will heal you by 11 hit points for every half you eat giving you a total of 22 hit points for one pizza. But if you don't like pizza, you can try using the Strawberry Basket which can hold up to 5 strawberries and heal you from 1 to 6 hit points depending on what hit points you have. So now, what stats would I recommend before you attempt to fight caves? I would highly recommend having 75 or more range and 43 or more prayer. Now let's find out about the monsters we are going to fight inside the fight caves. First we have the bat like creatures which are combat 22 and use melee as an attack. Every hit you take from these creatures will drain your prayer points for every hit they deal. Even if they hit a zero, they will still drain your prayer. Next we have the blob which is level 45. This creature can use melee attacks and has two stages. If you attempt to do melee damage to him, they will deal recoil damage of one when hit. After you have killed it, they will split into two level 22 creatures which will also do melee damage as well. Then we have the range creatures which you want to protect range against as they can hit you for a maximum of 13 damage. Now we have the melee creature at 180 combat and can hit you for a maximum of 25 so keep your distance from them. This creature has the ability to heal itself and those around it so make sure you get rid of it first before it heals those around it. And then we have the magic creatures at 360 combat that can hit a maximum of 54. So when you fight this creature you will definitely want to pray magic throughout their waves. Finally we have the main boss which is Jad who sits at level 702 combat and can deal the maximum damage of 97 with its magic, range and melee attacks. I'll go into more detail of the fight later on. Now let's move on to the waves of the fight caves. There are a total of 63 waves in the cave. It seems long but that is because they follow a pattern with the 5 creatures in the cave. As shown on the screen you can see how they rotate themselves in every wave. You can see the pattern happening throughout these waves here starting with the bat. After you kill 2 of the bats, you will see a blob spawning in. Once you get to 2 bats and a blob, the next wave will have 2 blobs as the bats will be done spawning in. Once you have killed the 2 blobs, the next creature will spawn in which will be the ranger. Once you have killed the ranger on wave 7, from waves 8 to 13, it will be the same rotation with the bats and the blobs except you have to face the ranger as well until wave 13. 
Once wave 13 is over, you'll face off with two rangers on wave 14, which will mean on wave 15 you'll be going up against a level 180 melee. So from there, you'll go through wave 15 and again, the rotations will start again like from waves 1 to 14, but it will include the melee creature throughout the rest of the waves. Once you get to wave 29, you will have two rangers and one melee, meaning wave 30, you will have to go up against two melee spawning in, which then on wave 31, the mage will spawn. After killing the mage on wave 31, you'll see the same rotations again from waves 1 to 30. The mage will be there throughout more than half of the fight caves from waves 31 to 62, as at wave 61, you'll have one mage and two melees, which will mean on wave 62, you'll face off against two mages, which then will mean on wave 63, you're going to have to face against Jad. So when do we use our overhead protection prayers? From wave 7 to 14, you'll be praying range. When you get to wave 15 to 21, you can stay in the safe spot while killing the melee creature, which means you do not need to have your overhead protection on. From waves 22 to 29, you'll be praying range again, and on wave 30, you may need to protect from melee if you cannot get both melees in the safe spot. And finally, from waves 31 to 62, use Protect from Magic and do not turn it off. So where is the safe spot? The safe spot is near the exit of the fire caves, which is the spot we have called Italy Rock. Just because it looks pretty similar to Italy. At this spot, you can stand in these areas here to protect yourself. At the north of Italy Rock, you can protect yourself from the creatures that spawn south of Italy Rock, meaning those who come from the middle or the west side will be the only ones that can attack you. If you move to the furthest corner on the northeast side where the exit is, you can get the creatures closer to you so you know you have full protection from the ones that spawn on the south side of Italy Rock. Now let's finally move on to the Jad fight. Before we actually go into the Jad fight, be sure to have full health and prayer points and also have your game sound effects on. As you fight Jad, he can perform all three attack styles of melee, range and magic. You want to keep your distance from him so you cannot use his melee attacks. Wondering if he's using magic or range? Just watch his animation and listen to the sounds. If he's using a magic attack, you'll hear the sound effect and at the same time, Jad will perform his animation which is lifting and keeping his front legs up and then shooting a fireball at you. When using range attack, he will smash his front feet to the ground and then you will hear the sound effect of a meteor-like object crash down onto you. So always remember to be protecting magic or melee as soon as you see the animation. Next part is when Jad hits below half hit points. As this happened, four healers will spawn around the map ready to heal Jad. Be sure to get their attention and either tank or kill them one by one while trying to pray against Jad. The other method is to get the healer's attention and run to a safe spot like Italy Rock and protect from Mali while you have all the healers around you. Kill him and continue to kill Jad. And as you kill Jad, congratulations, you've completed the fire caves and received your fire cave. So now, here are some tips during your fire caves attempts. Eat an anglefish or drink a serodomin brew into a super restore and then a ranging potion so you have boosted hit points and range. It is possible to pray flick in the caves. The ranger, melee and mage will hit every 4 ticks and Jay will hit every 8 ticks. If you want to know when they will hit exactly, use a blowpipe as it hits every 2 ticks or if you want to, you can use a crystal bow as it hits every 4 ticks. When finding just the mage alone, try attacking it at the same time while using the blowpipe to prayer flick every 2 ticks while killing the mage so you don't have to use any prayer points. When finding the mage and the ranger, try to kill off the ranger first if they're attacking at different times, watch which one is attacking you first and then switch to the other by using the correct prayers. If you're curious where Jad will spawn, find out on wave 62 when finding the orange mage and that is where Jad will spawn. So I hope this guy has helped you out a lot. If you're still struggling to get your fire cape, I do fire caves for viewers on my live streams, so you can check out the panel for more information about me attempting your fire cape. If you want to see more guides, be sure to comment on what you guys want to see next and be sure to leave a like and subscribe to see more videos from me. So thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all for the next one.